As you all know, I've been following Walt Disney, reporting on the company uh, for the past two years. I broke a story in 2020 uh, that looked at Walt Disney Company's uh, internal programs. They were teaching employees critical race theory, uh, uh, and it was a kind of scandal at the time. Uh, I got Disney to actually back off on that program. After I released my report, the company wiped all of its uh, uh, critical race theory-based trainings from the internal servers and issued a mealy-mouthed statement, almost apologizing for it, but also defending it, trying to have that perfect position uh, to make everyone happy. Uh, but of course, that was only just the beginning. Uh, earlier this year, Disney entered the culture war with a strong position against Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' uh, parental rights and education bill, which did something very simple. It restricted public schools in the state of Florida from teaching radical gender theory in grades K through three. These are very, very young kids. And the bill was very simple. It said you're not going to teach about gender identity, sexual orientation, sexuality, etc., to kids at this very young age. I think this is in response to so many parents being kind of bewildered by all of these ideas being pushed in schools around the country. And Disney kind of misrepresented this. They called it the Don't Say Gay Bill. They mobilized their internal activists. They mobilized externally. The former, now former CEO, Bob Chapek, uh, took an aggressive stance publicly, uh, but he just got absolutely battered. Um, and it was a, kind of an amazing thing to watch. I had an inside seat on it. I did, uh, during this controversy, I leaked internal videos from Disney uh, uh, with, with exposing the company that had been really pushing those tenets of radical gender theory into its kids' programming. They were admitting it in these town halls, really extraordinary, talking about tracking pansexual characters and bisexual characters and non-binary characters, eliminating the usage of boys and girls in all the theme parks uh, to use gender-neutral pronouns, uh, and then promising what one executive called a, quote, not-so-secret gay agenda uh, in all of its kids' programs. And after that, in this whole brouhaha, this whole controversy, uh, the governor ended up passing and signing legislation stripping Disney of its special tax status. So that's the backstory. Now fast forward almost a year since a lot of these stories started to, to come out and uh, Disney changed its tune quite dramatically. The stock price plummeted, public approval plummeted, uh, and, and even the domestic subscriber growth for Disney Plus also plummeted um, to the point where they actually just booted their CEO and former CEO Bob Iger has now returned to the company. Uh, my sources inside Disney found even more video from Bob Iger, uh, and he's striking a very different tune than his predecessor, Bob Chapek. So uh, this is, again, video from inside Disney's first town hall with Bob Iger. Let's listen in. Here's a virtual question. Many cast members had wished that Disney stayed out of politics. Will Disney stay out of making political statements? Do I like the company being embroiled in controversy? Of course not. It can be distracting and it can have a negative impact on the company. And to the extent that I can work to kind of quiet things down, I'm going to do that. But I think it's, it's important to put in perspective what some of these subjects are and not just simply brand them political. And so what you're seeing here is that he's signaling uh, in this kind of corporate jargon that he's going to, quote, quiet things down. In another part of the town hall, he actually said he regretted the company picking the fight with Governor Ron DeSantis. Uh, it's something that it shouldn't have waded into. Uh, and of course, you know, Bob Iger, as some of you might know, uh, is himself a kind of left liberal stalwart. Some have said that he actually started a lot of these programs during his tenure previously. Um, but what you're seeing is a strategic shift in tone. His convictions are probably the same. But what he's saying publicly is very different. He says that the state of Florida is an important partner. He hopes to quiet things down. He regrets that he got into this fight. And essentially is saying in this stage-managed public event, Disney is moving towards neutrality in the culture war. Now, why is this important? It's important because it gives conservatives an idea of how they can start waging these culture war battles with public companies, huge companies like Disney, uh, and because they respond to incentives. And I think... In the fight against Disney that's taken place over the last year, as, as I've seen it, as I've observed it, as I've participated in it, I think we're learning a few key lessons. Uh, one of the key lessons is that uh, exposing uh, uh, critical race theory or radical gender ideology or a kind of hyper-woke programming in these companies uh, can, can gain the attention of the media, can gain the attention of the audience. 
Uh, we saw, again, Disney's public approval rating drop by about 40% as far as the, the number of, or the percentage of, of the public that viewed the company favorably, this is really uh, catastrophic for a kid's entertainment company. But simply doing the media game, simply manipulating public opinion or swaying the public against something or for something else uh, isn't enough. And I think the second key element is really political power. Um, it's to actually say, uh, you know, the ultimate kind of arbiter, the ultimate authority in a democracy is the legislature and then the executive. And what we saw in Florida was a very strong stance. And it said, the, the idea was very simple. The idea was that uh, if Disney is going to try to impose its ideology on the public in Florida, using some of its special privileges and tax status, uh, we're going to actually say that that's a, a violation of the public trust. We're not going to change the rules and, and really push back on some of that top-down corporate uh, 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 kind of engineering of culture and opinion and really politics. And so the idea being that when Disney enters the political fight, uh, uh, the, the legislators, the governor, aren't going to simply uh, back down. They're going to say, you've entered the political arena. Now you're subjecting yourself to actual, the, the actual political process. And I think Bob Iger, you know, uh, whatever his faults may be, uh, is, is, is doing the smart thing. He's trying to protect the company, which is actually in a financially difficult position right now. Um, but he's also doing the smart thing politically. He's trying to uh, signal to his own internal activists that he's going to keep promoting inclusion, that these issues aren't really political. He's trying to soften these, the, this rhetoric around the edges. Uh, but what he's really doing in the subtext of this speech, the subtext of the whole meeting was... You know, we're going to take a step back. He says at one point, we're going to respect the audience. We're not going to condescend to the audience. We're going to make sure that we're taking into account uh, uh, public opinion. And so this is really, uh, I think, one of the most instructive examples in, in recent times for how companies can push back.